So question five. We've got a ring as pictured here threaded onto a rod and it says it's a rough horizontal rod. That tells us something that tells us that friction is involved and if friction is involved we need to remember instantly the expression or the equation friction is equal to mu r where mu is the coefficient of friction. Uh, we've got uh, the ring being pulled along by a string. Let's let's get some forces on our diagram. So the ring's in contact with the rod. So there's a reaction force. There's also the mass of the ring, which is very small, but we need to include it nonetheless. The weight of the rod is 0 0.5, 0 0.25 g acting down, and as the ring is going to move to the right, that's the weight of the force that's being pulled, the friction is going to oppose the motion, and I'm going to call this F little r for friction. Now, you can see here that the 1.2 newtons acting at 40 degrees is the one that's annoying, the one that's not acting either vertically or horizontally, so let's get that drawn. So if we had a hypotenuse of 1.2, the vertical and horizontal components could be made up. So that's 40 degrees. That's 1.2, the hypotenuse. Then using our trigonometry, this over here is 1.2 sine 40 and 1.2 cosine 40. So we've broken the 1.2 acting at 40 degrees into its vertical and horizontal components. As always with these questions, um, we don't know what uh, coefficient of friction is. No, but as normal in these questions, we need to resolve in two different directions. So that's the very first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to resolve upwards. Before I do looks resolving upwards, I'm going to see that R acting upwards and um, 1.2 sine 40 is also acting upwards as it's in limiting equilibrium um, well we've got to take away the weight first 0.25 g as it's in limiting equilibrium it's not accelerating it's not moving it's equal to zero let's call that equation one and let's resolve horizontally the way that it would be moving if it was going to move. So to the right we've got 1.2 cosine 40 degrees and we've got friction acting opposing the motion again it's in the limited equilibrium so we've got those two equations. Let's try and answer the two things we need to answer now. If we look at uh, equation number one we can see that r is an unknown, 1.2 sine 40 we can tap into our calculator, minus 0.25 g we can tap that into our calculator, where g is 9.8. So really, r is equal to 0.25 g minus 1.2 sine 40. Just tap that into our calculator, we're going to come out with r equaling 1.67865486 and let me write that again, my apologies. Um, 1.67865486848468 which is approximately 1.68 Newtons. Now looking at part B, we've obviously um, used part 1, so we're going to use equation 2, but we also need to use this fact up here. We've not used that yet. So using part 2, we can see that the friction is equal to 1.2 cosine 40. But we can replace friction with mu r when using the r that we've just found. 
So we find that mu r is equal to 1.2 cosine 40, or rearranging, mu is equal to 1.2 cosine 40, all divided by r. Now I'm going to do this on my calculator, but I'm going to use the full unrounded answer for uh, my uh, reaction force. I'm not going to use the 1.68, which was to 3 significant figures. I'm going to use this whole answer, just use the answer button in the calculator. Do the division, you get r is equal to 0 0.547613015, which when we round to three significant figures is 0 0.548. 548. And there is no units for coefficient of friction. It's dependent on the materials that the rod and the ring are made of. And thus we're finished.